If we wire a circuit so that we have two lamps in series, what will happen? That seems like a fair question, so let's take a look. The answer might surprise you. Lamps in most UK circuits are wired in parallel. It's how our electrical installations have developed and most times we do it without thinking. What would happen if the lamps were wired in series with each other? It does happen, especially amongst DIYers. They want to add an extra lamp in a room. It can't be that difficult if an electrician can do it. It's just another two wires and a ceiling rose, isn't it? Later in the video, we will use Ohm's law and power law to make some very easy calculations. If you're not up to speed on these, don't worry, we go through them in easy to follow steps. First, let's take a look inside a standard ceiling rose. In a three plate ceiling rose, you will find a row of brass terminal blocks plus an earth block. The terminal blocks are made up of one block of two terminations and two blocks of three terminations. We always, always designate the brass terminal blocks as follows. The outside block of two is used for the switch wires. The middle block of three is the live loop block and the outside block of three is the neutral block. Let's look now at how we make the wiring connections inside the ceiling rows and how we shouldn't. This is a correctly wired ceiling rows for the three plate method. In this example, we have only one single lamp. Pause the video and follow the route of the electricity from the brown or live input to the live loop in the ceiling rows, down to the switch and back again to the switch block. From the switch block to the lamp, through the lamp and on to the neutral block. Finally, from the neutral block back to the neutral bar in the consumer unit. Now we can add a second lamp in parallel with the first. When lamp 1 comes on, so does lamp 2. This has been achieved by connecting together the switch blocks in the two ceiling roses and then connecting together the neutral blocks in each ceiling rose. Attach your second lamp between them and all is good. Now look at this configuration. More than once I've been called to a house where Mr DIY has attempted some home electrics. As soon as you see the symptoms, you are pretty sure of what has happened. Follow the path of the electrics this time. From the incoming line terminal, it goes to the live loop and then to the switch. And from the switch, it returns to the switch block. Now, this is where it goes wrong. The first lamp is connected between the switch block and the neutral, but there is no neutral connection at the leftmost ceiling rows. Instead, there's a link to the switch block on the second ceiling rows and then a neutral connection back to the consumer unit. This is now a series circuit, two lamps in series across the 240 volts. Totally wrong. We can have a closer look at what we've got and how they look as schematics. This is the single lamp from earlier and on the right is how it might be shown in a schematic drawing. This drawing makes it much easier to visualise what is going on. We have the incoming line that goes to the switch, from the switch to the lamp, and then completing the circuit back to the neutral connection. Here is a simple schematic drawing for two lamps controlled by one switch. This is a parallel circuit. When the switch is turned on, the same voltage, 240 volts in this case, appears at both the lamps. The other end of both lamps are at zero volts at neutral. We are not going to use 230 volts in this video. Instead, we will revert back to 240 volts, since this is closer to the actual voltage measured and, more importantly, it makes the calculations a lot easier later in the video. Now look at this series circuit. One lamp is connected to the line input, but not the neutral. The second lamp it's connected to the neutral output, but not the line. This is not correct and will cause problems, as we shall see. We could draw the previous circuits as a vertical string from top to bottom, as shown here. We have the same single circuit correctly installed. Two lamps in parallel, which are also correctly wired. 
and two lamps in series that are incorrectly connected. These two representations of a series circuit are the same electrically. But the parallel circuit on the left is not the same as the series circuit on the right and sometimes it is difficult to see what wiring arrangement you actually have until you draw it out like this. Take out your notebook and sketch what you have. You'll be surprised how much this actually helps when tracing circuits. Let's look now at the number of watts or power in the different circuits. These are very easy calculations that we will go through in easy steps. And there are a couple of practice questions for you at the end of the video. You will need to use Ohm's law and power law for these calculations. Using these two triangles, if we know any two values in one triangle, then we can find the third value. If we can solve one triangle, then we can solve the second. Start by looking at the single lamp circuit. Begin by finding the resistance of the 60 watt lamp shown. It is designed to be connected across 240 volts. The resistance is, for now, the only thing that we know is fixed. The resistance of each lamp will not change. In all these examples, we are keeping things simple. We are looking at pure resistance and ignoring the very small effects of reactance and impedance. First, find the current that flows through the lamp using the power triangle. Power divided by voltage will give us the current in amps. So 60 watts divided by 240 volts is 0 0.25 amps. A 240 volt 60 watt lamp will consume about a quarter of an amp. So why has your bedside lamp got a 13 amp fuse in it? But that's for another video. Now that we know that 0.25 amps flows through the lamp, we can use Ohm's law to find the resistance of the lamp. Voltage divided by current gives resistance. 240 volts divided by 0.25 amps is 960 ohms, the resistance of the 60 watt lamp. Now we can say that, at 240 volts supply, each 60 watt lamp has a resistance of 960 ohms and a current flow of 0 0.25 amps. And we can use this number, 960 ohms, in all of the following calculations. Now we can make some calculations for lamps in parallel and see what numbers we get and then compare these to a series circuit. How much power is consumed by this parallel lighting circuit. We already know that the resistance of each lamp is 960 ohms and that 0 0.25 amps flows through each lamp at 240 volts. So two lamps at 0 0.25 amps each is a total of 0 0.5 amps. Now we can calculate the power. We've already made these calculations for the single lamp and so we can reuse the data that we calculated. P is equal to voltage times current, and we know that 0 0.25 amps flows through a 60 watt lamp. So 240 volts times 0 0.5 amps is 120 watts. Or we could simply have said that, as we have two 60 watt lamps, 2 times 60 watts is 120 watts. Consider lamps in series now. The results are very different. What is the power in each 60 watt lamp when they are in series? From earlier calculations, we know that the resistance of each 60 watt lamp is 960 ohms, but now they share the voltage. They don't have the full 240 volts across each lamp. We must start by adding the resistances together. So 960 plus 960 gives us 1920 ohms as a total circuit resistance. Now we can apply Ohm's law to find the current. Voltage divided by resistance will tell us the current. So 240 volts divided by 1920 ohms is 0 0.125 amps. Now calculate the voltage across each lamp. Voltage is current multiplied by resistance, so we have 0 0.125 amps multiplied by 960 ohms to give us 
120 volts. The voltage is divided between the lamps, and as both lamps are the same resistance, the voltage is divided equally. This means that each lamp has only 120 volts to energize it. Next, calculate the power in each lamp. Power is voltage times current, so we have P equals V times I, which is 120 volts multiplied by 0 0.125 amps to give 15 watts of power for each lamp. So we have just 50% of the voltage, but only 25% of the power. The voltage has dropped by half, but the power has dropped by a half of a half. The result? Very dim lights. And this is what you will see as you walk into a room where the lamps have been incorrectly wired in series. And now over to you. And the first question is very easy. Calculate the total power in this parallel circuit. We have four 60 watt lamps all being supplied by the 240 volt source. You can reuse data that we calculated earlier in the video if you wish, but there is a very easy method with parallel circuits. Pause the video and do the calculation. The answer you have should be 240 watts. You can make the calculations if you wish, but as this is a parallel circuit, and because we already know the power of each lamp, we can simply add all the wattages together. 4 times 60 watts is 240 watts. Now, on to practice question number 2. This is a little harder and will require some working out. Take your time with it and write down your calculations as you go along. What is the power in each 60 watt lamp when they are in series? There are four lamps in series, but this is not a problem. Just follow the method that we used before. This is a series circuit, so we will need to calculate the total circuit resistance, and we know that one lamp is 960 ohms. Now calculate the total current in the circuit using Ohm's law, as we already have the voltage. Then calculate the share of the voltage across each lamp, again using Ohm's law. Finally, we can calculate the power in each lamp using the power law triangle. Pause the video and do the calculation. Take your time. Follow the steps indicated in the yellow box. Your answer should be 3.75 watts per lamp. This is what happens in a series circuit. With four lamps, the total resistance is 4 times 960 ohms which is 3,840 ohms. Voltage divided by resistance gives us the current, so 240 volts divided by 3,840 ohms is 0.0625 amps. The voltage across each lamp is calculated by I times R, which is 0.0625 amps multiplied by 960 ohms, giving us 60 volts across each lamp. Finally, calculate the power. The power triangle tells us that P equals V times I. So 60 volts times 0 0.0625 amps gives a result of 3.75 watts. Incredibly small. The lamps may not even light up. And notice that because the voltage is shared in a series circuit, the voltage is now only a quarter, but the power output is reduced to just one sixteenth, a quarter of a quarter. In summary then, most lighting circuits should be wired as parallel circuits. Every lamp will have a working voltage of 230 or 240 volts across it. The stated wattage or power will only be relevant at the working voltage. However, if the lamps are wired in series, the voltage across each lamp will be reduced. The voltage will be shared between the lamps in proportion to the resistance of each lamp. In a parallel lighting circuit, we can simply add the power or wattage of each lamp that is on to arrive at the total power consumed by the circuit. From there, we can use power law to calculate the total circuit current. More lamps means more power 
and this means more current flowing. But for a series circuit, more lamps in series will reduce the current that flows and the power that is consumed will also decrease. For parallel circuits, should the lamp fail, be removed or turned off, the remainder of the lights will stay on and the current consumption will reduce. In a series circuit, any lamp that fails or is removed will stop all the lamps in that circuit from operating. They will all go out and the current flowing will drop to zero. Think of the old Christmas tree lights. Every year there was always at least one bulb that had failed and we had to check every bulb in the chain to find the culprit before the lights would work. Thank you for watching. It's very much appreciated. We hope you found this video useful. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you'll find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com And don't forget, you can also type in Learn Electrics or one word into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel. Don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.